to, to, uh, to today's day of, of the GADEPS uh, conference. Uh, so our next speaker is uh, Nazim Khalifa, who is going to talk about a criterion for density of Hodge loci. Okay, thank you, uh, Roberto, for the introduction, and thank you, Hussein, for giving me the opportunity to come to this very nice conference. So um, this talk will be uh, some kind of continuation of, uh, of uh, the series of lectures that Gregorio gave. Uh, so I tried to explain how this philosophy of uh, realizing Hodge loci as, um, as uh, intersection loci and distinguishing between typical and the typical intersection can be used to give criteria to, to characterize, at least conjecturally, the, the ZVHSs that give actually dense, analytically dense Hodge loci. So um, first I'll recall some notation that it will be approximately the same as Greg's and I will try to recall the, the bigger picture, but I, tr uh, I will take uh, many things he said for granted, so don't hesitate to, to stop me if you have any, uh, any question. So throughout the talk, V will be a, a pure polarized integral variation of our structures. And, um, and so it will be on a smooth uh, quasi-projective and irreducible base, so complex, right, yes. Okay, so I'll denote by uh, GD what I will call the, the generic Hodge data of V. So G is the generic Monfortate group. So as we saw, as uh, Greg saw, it's, it's the Tanakian group of the sub Tanakian category generated controlly by V in the category of ZVHSs over S. And uh, so G can be seen as some subgroup of some GLN uh, because uh, we have a, a period domain in the GLN, I mean, thanks to the, because we have uh, the fibers. And, um, and so D will be the, the, the Mumfortate, say MT for Mumfortate, the Mumfortate subdomain of uh, as uh, two of the bigger period domain associated to, to G. So that's what I will call a, a Hodge datum. So sometimes I'll call, uh, talk about sub-Hodge data, so that, that will be something like that with the, as a sub Mumfortate group of G. Starts there. Okay. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, Okay, and um, so yeah, I'll denote, I'll take some gamma, some uh, uh, arithmetic torsion free lattice that contains the, the image of the monodromy representation. And phi will be the the normalized period map period map so I take uh, it's not the Griffith usual Griffith period map that goes to a period domain I mean I take the smallest uh, domain containing the image and finally I've done by M the uh, algebraic monodromy group so So it's the, the identity component of the Zariski closure of, uh, of the image of the, mono, the monodromy representation. And so first we call the, this theorem of Deligny André that will be useful to us. André that says that um, M is actually a, a, a normal subgroup of the derived subgroup of G. Okay, and uh, so um, okay, so that's for the notation. And now, for uh, just for the, the 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 big picture, let's recall so what I'll call the the Hodge locus, the, the Hodge locus of V is the tensor, tens, tensorial one. So it's the the locus where the the Monfortate group drops. And so, as uh, Greg explained, it can be seen as a union of uh, so-called special varieties. And these special varieties appear when pushed forward to the to the period domain as intersection loci between the period image and the, and some uh, sub homogeneous domains of the of the bigger Monfortet domain, and so we can we can make a, a, a dichotomy between those corresponding to typical intersections and those corresponding to typical intersections. So 
степени. Okay, and conjecturally, as uh, we saw, this is uh, conjectural to be algebraic. I mean, I'll put an interrogation point because <laughs> we don't know. Uh, so that's the silver point conjecture. And this is uh, assumed to be fine. Conjecture to be either uh, empty or uh, uh, analytically dense in the, in the base. Okay, and that, uh, now, uh, well, so that's for the recollections. And I will focus more on this part of the Hodge locus. And so, just to recall, uh, there's this. This uh, theorem of uh, Baldi Klingler Ulmo on one side and uh, and Tayuto Lozon, I mean, they made it uh, independently. That says that uh, if the typical Hodge locus is non empty, uh, the full Hodge locus is analytically dense in the base. And so, we expect that actually this density comes from the typical part because the Silverfin conjecture says that the typical part couldn't give a density, but we cannot exclude that this density actually comes from a typical points because we don't know the Silverfin conjecture for points. But yeah, but so anyways, this uh, thing suggests the following question that I will try to, to address is uh, can one give uh, a criterion to decide if uh, typical Hodge locus is empty or not. Okay, and so there is one first answer of Baldi uh, uh, They say that if the if uh, the level of uh, of V is greater than three, uh, then uh, the Hodge locus is the typical Hodge locus is dense, is uh, empty. And so now. Uh, what we'll do actually works in greater level, but I mean, it will be only interesting in the, in the case of level one and two uh, that are still open. Okay, so uh, just for the plan of the talk, uh, first I'll give a conjectural uh, criterion. I mean, explain what, what is expected and give, uh, and, uh, and give, um, give uh, sorry, and give uh, unconditional statements. <laughs> And then I'll give, uh, explain how this can be uh, applied to the more concrete uh, uh, setting of, uh, of uh, net left just low side of hypersurfaces, just to get closer to the theme of the conference. Uh, and if there is enough time, I will, uh, I will explain the proof, give ideas of proof. Okay. Okay, uh, just something I forgot in the, in the thing. I, I, throughout the talk, I will assume that, uh, that the monodromy group is as big as it can be, so it's equal, actually, to the derived subgroup, and I assume also that it is uh, too simple, not only simple, simple. I mean, we can work without them, but I mean, uh, this implies, simplifies it, uh, both the statements and the proof, so I think it's better to, for this talk to work here uh, in, this, uh, in this setting. So, okay, so uh, first, uh, for the first, uh, First, thing, first, let's uh, think about what's necessary to, to have uh, the uh, non-empty typical Hodge locus. So let's assume that uh, this Hodge locus is uh, the typical part is non-empty. Then it means that I have uh, some special typical sobriety in S, uh, special and typical, and let's denote by uh, GZ GZ. It's uh, generic data. Then. What typical means, it means that uh, the, 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 the image of, of Z corresponds to an, uh, a, a typical intersection between the, 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 this DZ and the period image. So it means that we have this equality of dimensions. So it must be equal uh, That's the same as uh, the, the, the equality of uh, the dimension that we used to, but it's just some work. And that's not, uh, not complicated, but anyways, because we have a true intersection here, I mean, this phi of the end is given, it's got given before, we have that this dimension is positive. So we have one first uh, condition, is that the, 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 Hodge, the generic Hodge datum of some typical special sobriety must, I mean, must have a, a, a DZ that is big enough to cross 
uh, with positive dimension, I mean, non-negative dimension, the, the, the period image. And so uh, it suggests to define the, the following thing. So if I take some h, dh to be a sub -hodge datum of a strict, let's say, to, of a gd, I'll say it is uh, v admissible if it is big enough to cross uh, Cross the, the, the period image, so if uh, dimension of it's positive. Again, okay, maybe I I use this uh, maybe stronger. Uh, say it's strongly admissible. Here I have strict positive dimension, uh, strictly uh, positive inequality. So it would mean that uh, the the in this case it would mean that the special typical subvariety is actually of positive period dimension. Okay, so, uh, and now uh, the, the, the main conjecture, I mean, the, what's expected for this, uh, to, answer of this to answer this question, maybe I'll go there because I'm more curious, is that uh, this condition is actually at, uh, the, the, only, uh, the only one needed. So that we don't do more. So, uh, conjecture. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah. so, the following are equivalent. First, the typical hot focus is not empty. It's dense, and there exists some subdatum strict inside of GD such that. Uh, which is admissible. So, as I said before, uh, this equivalence is actually, uh, I mean, we know the implication, uh, this is uh, the result of the uh, and multa uh, but we were not able to exclude that the density comes from uh, a typical uh, point. And now the new thing is that actually to, to get this and probably this, we, uh, we, we only have to, to ask for that. So, okay, and um, now maybe, uh, so I can give you, a, uh, I can explain you the, the unconditional result that we obtained in joint work with David Urbanik and Skolan Eterovich, got it independently. Um, and actually, it boils down to saying that uh, the Zilberpin conjecture implies this, and that, uh, I mean, we just have to exclude that density come from typical, point, uh, typical points, but we can produce, uh, so maybe uh, first, sorry. I'll explain uh, what's the, the difficulty in it. So, just make a drawing. Assume that this is d mod gamma, and I have some some period image here. Okay, and what we're assuming is that we have some we have some subdomain here, gamma h mod dh, and we know that it is big enough to cross uh, to cross my period image uh, typically, and so what we want to prove is that I can find some g in G of Q, some, some rational translate of this subdomain, such that uh, this translate would be so that this one will intersect with the, the expected dimension. And actually what we'll prove is that in the neighborhood of any point here, if I take any, any point in the neighborhood, I can find a translate that will intersect uh, typically. So this will give actually the the density of uh, of the of the hot the hot locus, but we can we can't say that this is the uh, this gives the density of the typical hot locus because actually this point here, although we know we have uh, such intersection with expected dimension, this point could be a CM point, and we are not able to exclude that. If it's a CM point, it means it has smaller it has smaller uh, smaller Manfotet group, and so it cannot be typical for its uh, for its Manfotet group. I don't know if it's clear, but I mean, there is this uh, normalization process as well. Okay. Anyways, okay, and so maybe. Uh, now the, the, the statement that we're able to prove. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you just have to compute the morphotel group. Ah, okay, but then I think you can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
I mean, if you compute the, the, the Montfortier group, you just have to compute the Montfortier group. I mean, you are given a, a subright, a component of the of the hot locus. If you know it's in the hot locus, you know that its Montfortier group is smaller than G, so I, it has a it has a Montfortier group. So you can look at the corresponding uh, subdomain, and then you have uh, you can compute the dimension of the, the image, you can compute the period image, you can compute. I mean, in your in your case, you can compute the you can compute the dimension of your of your of your component. You can do that, and you can compute the Montfortier group. I mean, it's uh, the the, fi the fixator of your of your vector, Hodge vector of your uh, algebraic cycle. I mean, you, you know it, so you can compute the, the fixator of it. So you know the Montfortier group, and so you know the dimension. You can just compare. I mean, you just have to that to have this equality there. If you have this equality, but, but you ah, you want me to do it? Oh, <laughs> maybe I'll do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But after that, uh, I make some computations with another left shed's loss sign. Okay. Yeah, so what was I saying here? Okay, well. Okay, so the, the, the main theorem uh, of, this, uh, of this talk it will be the following. So, so it's uh, due to a theorem of each scanlan. And uh, myself and David are running. And the whole previous work of uh, Izadi, um, Colombo Piccola. And, uh, and Chai. I mean, but uh, these two were working in AG, in the modular space of a billion varieties. Chai was working in the, in the general Shimura varieties, but I mean, and the, the, more the general results in this form is due to the two, these two groups. Okay, so it says that uh, if um, some uh, there exists some AGH, uh, side of GD uh, strict uh, strict sub here sub uh, which is readmissible, then uh, how do you look at So if I have a v admissible uh, uh, sub Hodge datum, then I can construct a dense set of components of the Hodge locus, but I can't assure that they they are typical. However, I can say that well, I can say that this can be more precisely. One can construct set. So it should be let's call it C. So a set of couples ZG, where Z is a special sub-variety. Uh, and where G is in, a, in G of Q. And Z is a special sub-variety with the 
confronted group contain g minus one h g g minus one in this conjugate of h and such that uh, uh, first the union for uh, c g and z of the z's is a uh, dense and actually the these components have expected dimension in uh, dh. So that's uh, this setting here. So we can construct many, many translate that will intersect here. So we have those are the z disease. Those are the translates. But I mean, it's, it gives a. An in, uh, a dense set of points corresponding to trend, typical intersections with these uh, things, but I mean we cannot uh, exclude the possibility that all of these are RCM points. Okay, so um, so that's for theorem, and um, and maybe just I'll say a word about this uh, assumption that the monodrum is too simple. Actually, it's I mean, like that. This statement is uh, not. Uh, I mean, it cannot be. Uh, be true uh, if we not, do not assume that. For example, let's take C, a Hodge generic curve in A3, the modular space of curves, and look at the ZV, ZVHS corresponding to this current map. Inside of. Okay, so that's a proper ZVHS. And, um, and let's look at the, the subhash datum side of, so it will be inside of, uh, so it will be, uh, I can write it, uh, so H, it will be GS, GSP six cross GSP four cross GSP two, so inside of, uh, okay, and so the H will be, uh, H mod gamma H. We have the uh, A3 cross A2 cross A1. And so I want to look at this uh, the intersection, uh, the Hodge locus coming from uh, translates of these uh, so things with no 40 group contained in this thing. And so inside. That. And so if, if I could do the, this uh, admissibility, I can check this admissibility condition. I mean, uh, this, uh, this one A3, you mentioned gamma H. And the H, it's H3, it's M3, it's, uh, so it's six. A2 is uh, three dimensional, and A1 is uh, one dimensional, so it's uh, 10. And uh, the dimension of five SM here, it's uh, six plus one, seven. And the uh, dimension of D, a3 plus A3 is uh, 12. So I mean, uh, we have uh, this plus this minus this is bigger than zero. So I mean, it should, we should have uh, many intersections. But if you assume that, um, that uh, assume that the conclusion works. So here we're, we don't have a simple monodrum in the factor case because there's a product here. But assume that the typical hot locus, yeah, I mean, even the hot locus is. Uh, Dense. And then this would give a restricting this period, looking only the, the period map of now from C to A3. This would say that these the Hecker translates of then the Hecker translates of A2 cross A1 uh, intersect a C in a dense subset. But now, the problem is that on this factor, on the first factor, very admissible. I mean, there is a big excess of dimension. But on this factor, we're not, I mean, it's too small to, to truly cross. So, and so this would contradict, I mean, this would contradict the Zolberfing conjecture in this, uh, this auxiliary variations. So, I mean, we cannot, we need to assume the, the Q simplicity for, uh, for, to have this theorem in this form. But without the Q simplicity, you can, you can get out uh, of this problem by assuming not only that is globally admissible, but that it's, it has 
beginning of the emission on each factor to actually intersect uh, intersect the period. I don't know if it's clear. Okay. Anyway, so maybe uh, now I'll come to uh, to some uh, more uh, down to considerations. So I'll, I'll come back to another lecture on loci and maybe explain how. Uh, How you can apply this kind of consideration? So, uh, are there any questions? Actually, what is needed, we, we need less than the double frame conjecture. I mean, you need, so one density, so what we need to say is that for any small bool in S, so some small analytic thing, uh, the, the atypical Hodge locus intersected with B is strictly contained in the all Hodge locus. So that in any bull, I get here. I get many uh, components of the Hodge locus. I want to say that in any bull, I do not. I, I can't find a bull where I only have. Uh, I only have a typical intersection. So it's weaker than uh, finiteness, and uh, and maybe I think that this kind of result could be obtained by because here we only say we have density. We, we don't give uh, growth. We don't say anything about the growth of the Hodge locus. I mean, we could say something like this Mumford group is defined as fixing some Hodge tensors. So I could say that, uh, I mean, I could uh, put the, I mean, uh, write this as a growing union where uh, I want that, uh, I mean, here I will have uh, other Hodge tensors uh, fixed, and I want to bound the height of this Hodge tensor, for example. And then I let n uh, go to infinity and maybe give uh, an estimate of this. And maybe, on the, if we, so this would give uh, an estimate, and maybe if you can put some more condition using a typicality on this point, you would have, uh, you could convert it to some to and maybe. I mean, that would be a kind of a possibility, I mean, but it would be, uh, it would need more uh, precise work than uh, simply uh, density. Is good? Any other question? No, okay. Okay, so now uh, I'll talk about another, I should say, so more precisely, uh, I will look at, uh, so I'll take some D bigger than uh, five. I'll look at uh, S will be uh, the parameter space of, um, Of hyper of uh, degree D surfaces in P3. Okay. And I will be interested in the in the Nutter uh, uh, locus of this. Uh, so I mean, I have a, a family of the uh, universal family of uh, hypersurfaces over this, and I look at the the variation given by the, the primitive part of the homology of the fibers. Maybe I can write Q for the polarization given by a microproduct by, by the hyperplane section. And, um, and now what, we'll, uh, so what I, want like, I would like to discuss is this theorem of the uh, Chiliberto Harris Miranda, which says that um, the, if, I mean, they take the, the okay, um, the, um, the components of maximal dimensions of minimal dimension. The Nutter Lefschetz loci locus of S are uh, analytically dense. Dense in S. Okay, and actually, this kind of consideration can be used to, to prove that. And, and maybe to come back here, here, uh, if you look at this theorem, 
I was saying that if uh, there exists uh, then the full Hodge-Lucas is dense, but actually if you look at what we prove, we prove even more, we said that, so if we set, I set, uh, I call the Hodge-Lucas of type H to be the, the set of points, so in the Hodge-Lucas, which have actually a Monforte group contained in some translate of G minus one. So actually, what we prove is the density of this part of the hydrogen and, um, and so here, if I take a, 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 I take a, um, let's say, a, a Hodge vector in this, uh, this thing, and I want, I look at M to be the fixator of some uh, single Hodge vector. So the Nathan Lefschetz law side, the locus we is asking to, we, we look at the, the points where uh, we, we have more Hodge vectors than generically. So the, the Hodge locus of type M will be actually actually contained in the Nathan Lefschetz law side locus of S. And actually what we can prove with this kind of thing is the density of this. So the, let's uh, do that to see how it works. So okay, so um, first, there are, we can check that the monodromy is, uh, is q simple. I'll check every, every assumption. So by Beauville, uh, uh, here, the, the algebraic monodromy group is, uh, is precisely equal to, uh, to the, um, the full orthog orthogonal group uh, And um, okay, and uh, and so this uh, the, the, the the H, I mean, so H is so it's as big as it can be because I mean Q S is a is a Hodge class. Hmm? Yeah, it's an Hodge. That's wrong. Yeah, I mean, we will give the precise monodromy, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Okay, I think there can be, I mean, I fixed the vector, there could be, I mean. I mean, I, I think exactly, yeah. So, I mean, I could have other. Because actually, I would. Yeah, but I mean, what, what I mean, what I do here, I mean, all, all these things tells me something about the, 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 the dimension of the of the thing I will produce. I mean, here, I, I, my in this theorem, I say I will produce a dense set of components that have minimal dimension, so maximal co-dimension. Although I don't have typicality, geometrically, I have maximal. No, no, I don't need all components. I'm just saying that inside of this, I will have a dense set of components of maximal dimension. Okay. Okay. That's what my theorem is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So QS, QS is a Hodge class in, uh, in, in VS plus. Uh. So, um, okay, so, and this, so it's fixed by, uh, by the Milford Tate group. Uh, G, by the Monfortet group of the VHS. So actually, I have that uh, H uh, uh, equal to G there, and it's good simple. Uh, okay, and then I have to compute the, the, the image of the Purin map. So that's uh, simply Donaghy's uh, generic totality. So I, uh, so I, I know that uh, I mean this UN, this U2D has a dimension uh, three d plus three, and, um, and what, uh, minus one. 
And what Donagit uh, theorem uh, tells us is that you, if you mod out by, the, by this uh, uh, PGL for action, then I will have a, I will have a, a, a generic uh, injective parent map. So that the dimension of phi vessa will be uh, actually uh, three minus sixteen. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, I can compute the, 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 I have to compute this, this thing. Actually, the M, how is it defined? I, I, I have my, my, my pre-domain, my, my thing D. I have a fixed uh, lattice, and I say, I have, I take a Hodge, a Hodge vector at some, uh, some special uh, point, and I want it to stay Hodge everywhere. Uh, I, I want the locus where it stays uh, a Hodge class, so I mean, I'm asking, uh, for H to zero conditions, so this thing has can do, has H to zero, uh, H to zero dimension inside of D. So and this thing is equal to three more D minus one. And now it's simply uh, simply computation of dimensions. So. Uh, So, uh, and I even have more. I have that this density comes from components of minimal dimension. Okay, so this this is the kind of way we can apply uh, this kind of things to more concrete things. And yeah, maybe I should say something. It's uh, in the uh, Chiliberto Hyrus Miranda. It's for d bigger than four. Actually, I have to work with d bigger than five because Donaghy's theorem fails for d equal to four. So, uh, well, but, I mean, so you could compute uh, the uh, period image in some other way. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So maybe now I can give you uh, some ideas of proof uh, for the for the theorem. <laughs> Okay, so um, so yeah, what we want to prove is so let's take this picture. So I have S here, and I have some gamma H one H. And what I want is, I take a point, any point here, I take any small neighborhood. I want to find uh, a translate, a, a rational translate of this thing that will intersect my period image with expected dimension. Okay, so first, the first thing is that. Um, I mean, since hot generic points are uh, are dense in the in this uh, fire vessel, I mean, I can simply do this for hot generic point. I will still have uh, density. So let's take a so let's take a, a hot generic point, so a point that is outside outside the hot locus. Um, okay, and so just uh, to fix notation, I have this uh, usual diagram. Maybe to, to, to be able to work here, I'll take some uh, some fundamental domain for the for the, for the quotient and write for write i for the intersection uh, the fundamental domain that will intersect the image of this thing. Uh, and write i for this. And that's just uh, okay. And so I take uh, s inside of this x x to be the image of s and z inside of f to be some lifts of. Uh, Just the presentation. I don't see it there. Okay, and so what I want to do is, um, so okay, I have uh, I have some G. I mean, this thing I prefer, I, I can not assure that I have a rational translate, but I can say that I have a, a, a real translate of. Uh, I mean, because G of R acts transitively on D, I can say that I have some G in G of R such that my lift Z belongs to. Uh, G, D, H, so that I take my translate. Now I'm in D, I take my translate. Okay, and so there are two steps uh, to the proof. 
The first step consists in saying that we're marking the following thing. So if assume so step one, assume that we know that uh, actually GDH and I, which plays the role of my period image, intersect with expected dimension. Then this condition is a, it's an open condition on the on the G because uh, the, the axon of G is continuous and I mean if I move a little bit G, I will still be intersecting with expected dimension, and so because of because G of Q is dense in G of R for any neighborhood. I mean I have a, we have the we have the result we want. Uh, we have a rational translate. Because this is an open condition on G. Okay, and now because I have rational translate, so I can leave down, go back to, to the mod gamma, and I have everything I want. Some rational translate intersecting with expected dimension. So the hard part, in some point, in some sense, is proving that if I start with a hot generic point and I take the translator, the real translator that intersects I, uh, my, my fundamental domain at, at, the, at this point, then I will have uh, this intersection has to be. Uh, has to be uh, of expected dimension. So that's the step two. That's the, the part where something happens. So it relies on the, um, on the action rule theorem. So the action rule theorem, I, I will recall it. So um, it says that if you take a, a so just maybe recall that uh, here, we have the notion of algebraic variety, so variety of D, maybe it's not clear for everyone. But so you have this diagram here, S. D, but a priori D is not algebraic at all. But you can embed it in some uh, compact jewel, which is simply a, a closed subset in, in a Grassmannian, in a product of Grassmannian. And so there, there, there is a, an algebraic a notion of algebraicity. And we say that something is algebraic in it if it is the intersection, the trace of something algebraic. Okay. Uh, okay. And so the, what action term tells us is that if you take some W inside of, uh, inside of S, Cross D, an algebraic sobriety. Okay, and uh, and you take uh, U to be an irreducible component of the intersection of W with the graph. Uh, this graph. <coughs> here, okay, irreducible component. And you assume that this intersection here with the graph is actually uh, uh, a typical, so that it has bigger dimension than expected. So uh, you can write this like that. Uh, in S cross D of U is smaller than the codimension of uh, W in S cross D plus the codimension. Of, uh, of, of the graph. Then if you have an, an atypical intersection like that, then the projection, projection, so U is containing S cross D, so the projection of U in S is contained in a strict Weekly special. I don't know if you can read anything I'm writing here, but I mean, this means that the monodromy drops. I mean, if you have the, the, the meaning of this, is if you have a, an atypical intersection somewhere, the monodromy will drop. On the end. Okay. And, and so, how to apply this to, to our thing? Uh, 
Uh, okay, so, um, so assume, I mean, in my step two, I want to prove this. Okay, so assume so that we have a, a, a bigger than expected dimension. So, so there is some u prime, let's say, u zero, uh, an irreducible component of GDH intersected with i. Uh, such that uh, we have u0 has bigger, bigger dimension than expected, so the dimension of u0 is actually bigger than the dimension of uh, GDH plus the dimension of i minus the dimension of uh, Okay, uh, so assume that, and now the, 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 the first part is uh, simply a little work, but relating this certificate condition to this kind of, uh, of intersection. So how do you do that? You, you, put some, you put W to be GDH cross H, cross S, sorry. Okay, and then you look at U, an irreducible component of, uh, of uh, GDH of uh, W, so this is W, selected with the graph. And you don't take any, uh, any component, uh, uh, so here is so you take it such that, uh, so let me think a little bit. Yeah, you, you want that the projection of U, uh, the projection of, uh, on D, so in, in here, of U, zero, of U is equal to U zero. I mean, it's simply doing, you just have to think, but this intersection is barely relevant to intersecting GDH with, with the, the period image here, I being the period image. And actually, you can uh, I mean, you can compute that this thing and this thing, where W is, is this, are equivalent. So it's uh, two stars. And that's not uh, truly not hard. I mean, you just have to do it. Okay. And so now, because we assume that, we know that this thing corresponds to an atypical intersection. And now we can use the actual theorem. And say that then the projection of u to s uh, is uh, contained in some y with strict Euclid special. Okay, but now by the Ligne Andre, we know that uh, the monodromy group is a uh, strict. I mean, so okay, so let's not denote uh, my to be the monodromy group. of B restricted to Y. Then we know that MY by Deligne André is a normal subgroup of, uh, of uh, GY. Okay. But Y contains our hot generic point. That's why we started with a hot generic point. It contains my hot generic point. So GY must be G. Is the, uh, just, sorry, you're right. This is G. Because I started with a hot generic point, so Y contains my, my S, I mean S, because S belongs to a uh, projection of S to U, so, uh, so to it. Okay, and um, okay, and I know that uh, it's a strict weekly special, so it is also, so, and I know that here, I also have my big monodromy group, okay? And I know that, so, and I know that MY is strictly contained in M, so, uh, but uh, M, M, I mean, M is equal to G during here, but, Anyways, but this is Q simple. So I mean, M Y because it's strictly contained. It, it has to be zero. I mean, it has to be zero. So my Y here has to be. I mean, the image of my Y in the in the period image in the period image has to be a point. Okay, but here I started with a v admissible with a, with an admissible thing. So this is positive. So this is strictly positive. So that's a contradiction. That's not very uh, conceptual. <laughs> okay, but that's how. Uh, I mean. Okay, so this is a contradiction. Are there any questions? Okay. Then maybe I can tell you about something uh, be cooler than that. But I mean, this theorem suggests so to it tells that to get uh, to get density, you have to to take some hash datum that is uh, is like that. So 
dim dh plus dim phi of sn minus dim d. Okay, so when you want, if you want to have the emptiness of the typical Hodge locus, you want to, uh, to bound from above these two things. So either you want to say that there are no big enough uh, sub Hodge domain of my D to cross the period image, or you want to say, on the other, it's the other way of thinking, you can say that the period image cannot be too big. And so that's the two, of, two questions I've been thinking about. But I don't have many ideas. But so the first question is you fix some non rotate domain. And you take V, um, you take a period map, some, some version of a structure, but that lands in D and that has, uh, I mean, D must be the, the hot generic, uh, the generic uh, hot datum of, of, of V, so uh, a period map. And the question is, uh, what is the maximal dimension? So I vary among all the uh, S possible, all the uh, ZVHS, so I move the base, I move the variation of a structure. Just D is fixed. What is the, the maximal dimension of uh, five s, and that's I'm, I'm asking this because uh, there is a first answer given by uh, Griffith's transversality. Griffith's transversality tells you that if I take any VHS here, the period image will be tangent to some uh, sub uh, horizontal sub uh, sub bundle of the of the tangent bundle of my D mod gamma. And so in, um, I mean, the tension, the, tension, uh, the tangent space here at some point, it will be, uh, I mean, it will be some, uh, like, you can write it like that. Okay. And so you must be inside of this, but the period image is also, uh, is also a, a, an analytic of variety of, uh, of D mod gamma, so it has to be integrable, so that if I take inside of this, uh, and this is the tangent space of, I take a, a smooth point of uh, the image anyway. Okay, so, so it has to be integral. So by this, uh, no, this thing, it has to be to satisfy this, okay? So it has to be inside of G minus one, because A is in G minus one one by Griffith's transversality. But on the other way, this is in G, G minus one one with itself. And actually this is contained in G minus two two. Because uh, the, the Lie bracket is compatible with the, the decomposition. So, this, what he says is that A has to be a value. It's a Hodge. So, what, we, what they say is that the tangent space of the image of the period map has to be an abelian uh, subalgebra of my G minus 1. So, this gives a constraint on the dimension. Okay? And actually, um, there have been work on this, so maybe I, can, I should cite uh, Carlson uh, Toledo. And uh, Carlson, Kaspar, and Toledo. Where they compute precisely uh, the dimension bound given by this type of considerations. And what's bothering me is that every example of sharpness that they give uh, are non hot generic. So they produce a, a, a ZVHS like this, but the image lands in some smaller thing. And so maybe the other question that would be here is can one find a hot generic example um, of m uh, realizing this Griffith bound, uh, I mean, and I don't know for any domain, uh, uh, I don't know any example. For the first thing we could think about is, uh, is this hypersurface variations, but uh, I mean, you can compute that the, the, I mean, actually this bound, the Hodge numbers grow, grow, grow faster. I mean, because this, the bound you get from this is, some product of consecutive Hodge numbers, so, roughly. Okay, and so this will be uh, of this type, product of two things where you have D and N, D and N, while the period image is something only one thing. So asymptotically, you cannot. Uh, the period image will be way smaller than the Griffith bound for hypersurface, for example. And so um, that's a question. Uh, I cannot solve. Thank you.